We're shooting a lot of time lapse these days because it makes fantastic B-roll for when we're filming video. Uh, first thing, always shoot manual, okay, if you can. And then the other thing as well is I would strongly advocate always shooting raw because that's going to give you the most flexibility afterwards. Um, so let's get into this. So as you can see here, we've got 172 images. You can see up here, that's indicated up here. 172 images in Capture One, and these have been imported exactly as they've been shot. In the background here, you can see uh, beautiful Hong Kong Harbor, and I've shot this with a 24 millimeter uh, tilt shift lens. So the first thing I do normally with a time-lapse photograph is I determine how I want the white balance to look. Now for me, this is all a bit too uh, warm. It was shot uh, just as daylight and because we've got a lot of tungsten lights in here um, and I think it's probably some mercury vapor lights, we're getting a sort of a, a greeny yellow tinge. So let's go over here and we're gonna choose white balance. And what I sometimes do is I just sort of click around the subject just to see uh, where we're going to get a nice looking white balance. Now that's getting already towards something that I really do prefer but I'd like it to be cooler. I want to get a bit more sort of blue and coolness into this particular image. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take my color temperature slider down and you can see there the image is going to be much much cooler. Now I like that, okay? but there's a number of areas that I think we can work on here. First up, I think the sky could be more dramatic. Clouds are your friends when you're shooting time-lapse. Clouds show fantastic movement, okay? So we wanna work a little bit on the clouds, we wanna bring those out a little bit, and I think we can get a little bit more color into the water, and we can probably bring the buildings out a little bit more. So first up, let's just do some overall saturation in the scene just to really pump up the color a tiny bit more. Okay, now next up, let's start addressing specific things. So let's start with the sky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a, a local adjustment layer uh, just for the sky. So let's click on here now, and I'm gonna name that sky. It's always good to name your layers what they are, so when you come back to the files at a later date, you can see exactly which layers are adjusting what. It takes a second and it makes things much, much easier. Now I need to get choose a brush, which I can choose from here. So let's start brushing in, make, the, make this a little bit bigger, and let's just start brushing in our sky. So you can see we're just hugging the buildings down through there, but it's really the sky I'm interested in. Make sure we've got all the edges, everything through here. Okay, so let's, let's now work on the sky a bit. First up, let's make it a little bit brighter. Okay, now I'm only affecting the sky. The next thing we want to do is let's bring up the contrast. I want this to be really quite dramatic. Look at that. That's starting to have a great impact already. Now the other thing that's really interesting is clarity. I love clarity on this sort of subject. So there we go, bringing in the clarity a little bit more. And you can see already, that's made a big, big, big difference. If we just take off the layer, that's how it was. And that's what we've gone to. That's made a massive difference. Now the next thing I wanna do is these buildings. I think I'd like to apply a little bit more clarity to the building so they really sharpen up and really punch out of this. So I'm gonna do another adjustment layer and I'm gonna call this buildings. I'm doing this fairly roughly, fairly quickly, but I've got I've got a very soft edge on what I'm doing. Okay, so let's now have a little bit of a look at what happens when we increase the contrast just in there. You can see that's having an impact already. Let's bring up our brightness. Okay, so it's really popping out now. And now let's also bring out the clarity. Really push out our clarity there. Play around a little bit with the structure. So the city now really, really pops out of there and really stands out. Now I wouldn't mind bringing out 
one or two colors. I think there's a few greens in here that look very, very nice. And also in the water, maybe bring out those blues even further, okay? So let's make sure we're on our background layer, into color editor, and now let's make a selection here. Okay, and you can see there, bringing up this range here, and what I'm gonna do is actually totally lift up the saturation of those. Now you can see now, throughout here, that green has really sort of lifted out and really sort of punched out. Now let's let's play around with um, a sort of red, there's a kind of red magenta going on here. Let's open this up a little bit more, so something like that, and let's really pump up the saturation here as well. So we really bring out those colors, and you can see here that it's having a great impact on all the colors through here, and also through here in terms of the magentas and the reds. And also in the water, you see we've got a stronger reflection now in the water. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. That's all looking pretty good. So you can see there, that's looking pretty interesting. And, and importantly, it's actually looking really different to how it started off. So if I now right click on my file and I'll go to new variant, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get a copy of the image that I've just made, but it's a copy as it was. And if we look at the two files side by side, you can see there's quite a massive difference. Because this is gonna to go to video, we're actually gonna crop it now for a HD video aspect ratio. Now I've already set up a 1920 by 1080 crop. So that's what I've just chosen here. And now let's apply that. Okay, that's looking pretty good. You can see the nice thing when we're cropping, we've got the rule of thirds coming up. So let's let's make this roughly comply to rule of thirds, but actually, you know what? I actually think what we'll do is we'll lift this a little bit higher because there's a bit more happening in the sky with the clouds than there is happening necessarily in the foreground with the water. Now, if you want to view without these sort of grayed out areas, then what you do is you just click on another tool and that will all disappear. Now, to me, compositionally, that's all looking pretty sweet indeed. But the thing is, I've got 172 captures. So how do I get all of this information from this particular capture onto all my other captures? It's actually pretty easy. I'm now going to go Command A. So what I've done now is I've selected all 172 images. The next thing I'm going to do is just make sure that this is clicked here. And this all determines on whether any changes you make will now be applied to everything that's selected. So if that's chosen, those sort of multiple frames on top of each other, um, it determines whether it affects just the one you're working on or affects everything. So I want to affect everything. So we copy all the settings off that first variant and we're now going to apply them to all the rest. And you can see that's starting to happen now, but it's got quite a lot to do and it's going to take a few minutes, but nonetheless, the mask that we did, the in regards to the buildings and the sky, the color changes, the clarity, everything that we've done will now be applied to every single one of these frames. Okay, so here we are now. So everything's been done to all 172 files in terms of the adjustments. Now what I'm going to do is go into my process tool here and you can see we've already got selected HD size 1920 pixels wide and if we come down to the bottom here we can see that we're going to process these as JPEGs we're only going for 70% which is in my opinion totally fine for this and you can see that we're scaling to a width of 1920 pixels now because we've already applied a HD crop to these we know that the final output size will be 1920 by 1080, which is in fact, as you all know, HD size. Okay, so everything's set. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is, let's create a subfolder and we'll just simply call that HD size time-lapse 07, because that's what I've called this for the Hong Kong time-lapse. So it's just gonna be time-lapse 07. And let's hit process. Okay, so we check over here into our queue and it's time to maybe make a cup of tea or do something like that because it does now have 172 images to go through. And we're now going to 
open up um, quick time player seven because this is the easiest way that I know to actually create um, what's called an image sequence. So we don't need this little window open. So let's go here and we're gonna go open image sequence and okay so there's what we were working on in capture one so time-lapse tutorial I'm going to go into the output folder and you can see the name that we gave it HD size TL07 and all you do is click on the first frame in the sequence and go open and you're going to be given an option here now because we're in Europe uh, we will run this at a frame rate of 25 frames per second. Um, if you were in North America, possibly South America, you'd run at 30 frames uh, per second or 29.97. Um, but in PAL countries, we're going to do 25 frames per second and then we hit OK. And it will build our time lapse. So there's our time lapse there. And we can just test that by hitting play. And you can see that's not too bad at all. It's very, very, very easy to do. And we're done. So that's it. So thanks very much for watching and go out there and create some amazing time lapses. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.